I say it all the time. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. Been doing this a long time. Uh, we've had over 8,000 guests on Radio Entrepreneurs, and this is my first podcast show for seven or eight years. But before that, I had three other radio shows. It's not even my full-time job. My full-time job is uh, CEO of a management consulting firm in the Boston area for over 40 years. It's hard to imagine. Well, our next guest, Anaria Da Silva Kilgore, founder of pers Personal College Counseling. I hope I did that all right. It all came out fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Welcome you. to Radio Entrepreneurs. And tell us about Personal College Counseling. Well, I set up this company a few years ago, actually right before COVID, I think, 2019, um, as an outgrowth of what I was doing in my law practice because I'm a aid. And for the most part, you can't discharge student loans in bankruptcy. So I started asking a lot more deeper questions about that specifically. And it seemed that I kept getting the same types of answers. We didn't know better. We didn't understand the financing. We didn't know we had other options and so on. And I'm like, okay, we can do better than this. Having gone through it as a parent myself, you know, with our son um, and just everything that's going on in the background at these different schools, especially for us, we had a student athlete and there's just so much out there that people don't know and how to access it. And really what you want to do is get that best fit for your student but also maximize your aid package, whether it be financial or merit or a combination. Um, and I think people just aren't giving that enough time, enough diligence, it, not really maximizing their opportunities. And, and that's what I want to do. I want every family and every student that really wants a great college education to be able to afford it without borrowing ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, a little borrowing is okay, <laughs> right? $100,000 to get through undergrad, not okay. <laughs> so we need to really write that ship because I, I think, you know, and most people I think would agree with me that college and tuition and costs and fees have just, they've gotten so big and they're so scary. And people look at these sticker prices and just kind of, I think, go ah, and don't know what to do. <laughs> So that's well, what I, I think being a bankruptcy attorney, from what I know, and my experience with them is quite a good uh, uh, background and training. But Anaria, you know, the devil's in the details. Uh, when do should people start with you? And what does the process look like? Let's that's good. Let's, so we can draw a picture for our listeners. For me, if I had my druthers, I'd love to start with all of my students as freshmen, um, which most people just aren't even really thinking of college necessarily right then. But the reason is because I become that advisor, that mentor, that person guiding them through every step of the way, because what they're doing in high school is setting the foundation that you're going to build everything else up on. And in my brain, every grade, every A translates to dollars. The strength of your schedule translates to dollars. The actual classes you're taking translates to opportunities and which doors open and which ones don't. And this is especially true with kids who, not to down on our high school counselors, they're great, but this is not their job. Their job is to get your kid through high school in four years and move on. Um, but there's certain classes you need to take. And for example, a really good motivated um, high achieving student that gets sick of foreign language after two years and doesn't pursue it, um, you've just closed the door on a lot of the higher end liberal arts, very competitive colleges that really want three to four years of a foreign language. And now you've just made a misstep that no one even called out, for example, right? So you just need to know what the big picture is and, and how to move towards it, maximizing your students' own strengths, right? Um, so I love to do that early on. Also, because if I can get involved earlier, it's a lot easier for students, for example, to level up 
than it is later. And what I mean by that is let's say you're doing great, you're an honor student, you're getting straight A's, and then you come to me as a junior and that's all great. But somewhere along the line, I'll be like, well, why didn't you move from honors to AP if it was available? Or why didn't you move from college prep to honors? And you're really not gonna do that as a junior, it's too late. Um, and moving that GPA is, is hard to do in big steps. And the other big part of it is not only helping the kids pick their schools and, and their classes, but also when and how often to do those standardized tests, the SATs or the ACTs. Um, the SATs are not dead by any means. There's this huge misperception about college uh, colleges being test optional. And now these kids think, oh, I don't need to take this. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it really still does matter. And moving your SAT score by leaps and bounds is a lot easier to do than moving your GPA points here and there. Um, so we can use these things to advantages. And, and the reason it's important for me is because this whole process of targeting schools that have everything that the student wants, also socially, where are they going to fit in, right? Are they pursuing certain things? Do they want to be involved? Sports, theater, music, whatever it may be, you need that in the mix. And then how do we get that, that um, sticker price down to net cost that mom and dad can afford without the student over borrowing or them? And this SAT, GPA, and your other activities and interests, that all becomes part of the whole package of how we move that needle on the end price. So it's important. Um, so yeah, I kind of in the background doing all of that with the kids while we're doing our research and then targeting eventually junior year, I'd love if we can do it, is you really should be getting out to see the schools that now we've targeted as most appropriate and show your interest at you. But Go and put your feet on campuses and see if it's what you think it is, not just what you saw it was online. Sometimes those two things don't match up. <laughs> well, I do love that you've uh, combined the financial aspect to it because too often I speak to graduates who talk to me about not being able to stabilize their life after graduation once they're into their careers because their ability to get a home, a condo, uh, it affects their ability to, uh, you know, to, you know, pick the proper career choices after school. And right. so I think if you have a you strong foundation financially, and, you know, I assume a lot of your competitors don't do what you do. So I think it's very interesting, your model. And I just, I would ask you, if somebody and I know people should be talking to you. If somebody wants to talk to you and reach out to you, how do they find you? Well, I'm all over the place. You can go to my website, which is personalcollegecounseling.com. You can follow me on Instagram, same thing. Or you can just give me a call, 508-622-5250. Um, but if you go to the website, all the information's there. It also gives you a little background on you know, what we're doing. The Instagram I like to put, I like to put the kids' perspective on the Instagram, actually. Like, what are they doing? Where, where are we going? What are we looking at? Who's getting what? Kind of, that's the perspective I have there because I think it's more realistic to see what's going on. But yeah, I'm always here to talk to anybody whenever. Great. Well, we hope you come back because I think you bring good value to these students and to, you know, families and what they do. And remind everybody, this is Radio Entrepreneurs.